Now, Bezos, this is fascinating. I, I uh, have always been fascinated. Apple's, let me put it this way, Apple's stock price high occurred last fall. After the iPhone 5 hit and a number of revisions with the iPad and the iPad Mini came out, Apple's stock price hit $705 a share. And all of the experts predicted that it was heading to 1000 And then something happened and the bottom fell out. And it wasn't long before Apple was at $425 a share. And for a couple of days, it was under $400 a share. Now, all this time, Apple was showing massive profits. They were reporting profits that were leading the industry, but they were not the profits that the experts expected. Their profit was smaller than what was forecast by Wall Street analysts. And then the long knives came out in the tech media, and it became every day, let's kill Apple. While Apple was reporting massive profits, 73% of all profits in the domestic smartphone sector are Apple's. Their market share is is small because they only make, well, one, I'll have three phones, but they make one phone at one price. Well, that's not true. They do sell the, the previous two models, and they do sell well. But they don't have a new phone every five weeks. They don't have 16 different models and variations and colors. They've got one phone. Their market share is tiny, but they own all the profit. And yet, Wall Street abandoned them. And there were people trying to figure out why. But at the same time, Jeff Bezos' Amazon was showing loss after loss after loss. And when Bezos, when the company would do the quarterly conference call to report earnings to Wall Street, another loss or just a smidgen of profit would be reported and Wall Street would go nuts with excitement. And the stock price for Amazon launched ever higher. And as an average ordinary, I think Wall Street, I've always, ever, ever since the Federal Reserve began propping it up, Wall Street to me is a rigged game I'm not part of. That's been my attitude. Because I know that whatever money Bernanke's pumping in there, I'm not seeing any of it. But somebody is, and they're getting incredibly rich, and Wall Street's being really propped up. $800 billion of stimulus from the Federal Reserve into Wall Street that's ended up buying securities, essentially. QE3 is the most recent. And whenever Bernanke makes a public statement about maybe this is it, there is no more, you watch what happens. There is a massive sell-off, and the Dow Jones Industrial Average plunges. There's abject fear. So Wall Street's not being propped up by mom-and-pop investors. It's being propped up right now by the Fed. That's a little bit of another story. In the midst of all this, a company that was showing no profit and no growth was loved and adored, respected and eagerly sought, And a company that owned 73% of every dollar of profit in the sector had never shown a loss, had always grown, the profits were growing every quarter, was on the outs. So how can this be? So I got in touch with some people that I thought might be able to explain it to me. And here's what I was told. Wall Street analysts, the people that work at these brokerage houses and issue notes to investors giving their forecasts what they think company X or company Y is going to do in the next quarter, in the next two quarters, the next year, which is essentially these investor notes or investment advice. I was told that these people always look at growth potential, not what's happening now. And so the story on Apple was that they can't get any bigger than they are. Not with what they're doing. 
the phone is what's it's 2007, six years old. The iPad's three years old. There's nothing new that anybody knows about, and nothing that people see is out there that's going to grow it. Maybe they can't even sustain it. They were at 705. Now they're at, they've had a recent run lately. They're at 460. This is what I'm told. This is the way the quote unquote experts look at it. On the other hand, Amazon is nothing but growth potential. Precisely because it hasn't shown a profit. The profit's going to come. Just hasn't yet. Because Bezos is busy investing in infrastructure. He's building new data centers. He's acquiring property and building new uh, warehouses and things. He's acquiring more data to sell and distribute. And so the profits are going to be there. And occasionally, I was told, Bezos will even report a small quarterly profit just to show that he can do it. But Amazon is viewed as a company that's going to break out big sometime. Nobody knows when, but it's going to happen sometime, and you better get in on it. This is how it's being touted. But it isn't now. I just, intellectually, I had the toughest time understanding why invest in something that's not showing a profit while it's growing. It, it, by, even the profits that it does report now and then are just infinitesimally small, minutely small. And then said, the guy said, there's a, there's a phrase that you need to associate with Bezos. If you want to learn how he operates and, and the things he does, it's called free cash flow. And here's what free cash flow is. Bezos sells books and whatever it is on the Internet, and you buy with your credit card, and he gets the money that day. Now, in terms of books, he doesn't have to actually pay for the books that he's selling. They have to pay the publishers for sometimes 60 days. So he's got free cash flow for two, sometimes three months that he can invest however he wishes but it's his money. He's used. He doesn't have to pay what he owes for a couple of months on money he gets that day. He gets at the point of sale. Apple is this way in a way. I mean, Apple has one of the largest universes of credit card customers on file. I mean, it's huge. And Amazon, too. But Bezos, free cash flow is... is what these analysts say, look at this opportunity this guy's got. He's just taking in all this money, but he didn't have to pay it back or pay it out for 60, 90 days. He got this money to invest, grow, what have you. It's, it's, it's more complicated than that. I'm just trying to give you the basic shell of it, as it was explained to me. But essentially, the reason Amazon is so highly valued right now is because it's, it's thought of as uncontainable. At some point, Bezos is going to be unable to not report profit. That's how good it is. I don't know if any of this is true. This is just what these experts tell, uh, tell me in comparing Apple, for example, with, uh, with Amazon. But the point is that Amazon's here to grow. Amazon, however, didn't buy the Washington Post. Bezos did. It's a personal buy. So we don't know if the same operating philosophy is going to be applied to the, uh, to the Washington Post. We won't know for a while. And as I say, our first indication will be how many journalists begin to have conniption fits after the first few staff meetings when Bezos takes over. 